Okay, well, let me just tell you what we're going to do tonight. I, let me back up and say this. Some months ago, I was praying through the night, and I got up, and I was just seeking the Lord, and just seeking the Lord for direction, and I felt the Lord put in my heart, pray the prayers of Paul. I think most of you have heard me talk about that. So I just spent time going through, highlighting all the prayers of Paul that he prayed in the New Testament, and that was really positive. That was great for me in my spiritual life because I found myself praying a lot of prayers that maybe I wouldn't really think about praying, praying in ways that are beyond what I knew as the Ephesians prayer and some of the prayers found in Colossians and Philippians. And so that was a really positive thing in my life. And then just recently I got to thinking about what about the prayers of Jesus? You know, if you go through and you just think, what about Jesus while he was on the earth, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? If I were to go through and highlight all the prayers he prayed, and then look at those prayers, and obviously Jesus was God in the flesh, Son of Man, Son of God, and how he prayed about certain things, and using those prayers in my prayer life, and I've incorporated those in my prayer life. So today, I was just seeking the Lord, and I was praying about tonight's service, and I was thinking, Lord, you know, what direction do you want to take this? And it was like, hey, it's, it's been a blessing to you. Share it. You know, it'll be a blessing as we just go through and we think about the prayers of Jesus. Now, perhaps there's somebody here tonight that you have been in prayer and you have thought to yourself, I wish I had some new ammo to pray with. Have you ever felt that way? <laughs> like maybe you're praying and you're like, okay, I'm using all the prayers that I know, but I would like to be able to pray to expand my prayer vocabulary. I'd like to pray in a, a more scriptural way or a, a wider way or more understanding way about things. So tonight I want us just to go through the Gospels. Now the first thing I'm going to say is I'm not going to cover every single prayer. There's about 23 prayers of Jesus in the Gospels. I'm not going to cover all of them. So I'm going to hit on some of them and then if you'd like an outline of this message I can get you an outline and then you can go through that and just pray those on your own and kind of meditate on those. And I would encourage you to do just that, to meditate. You know, how many know that our devotions are not a race? You know what I mean? A race is like we're just racing through this. We're going to push through this. I want to hurry up and get through this. Well, God wants us to just take time and enjoy him and enjoy his word and glean from the scripture. So we're going to study this way. We're going to study through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, go through the prayers of Jesus, with the exception of the first scripture I'm going to read, the first passage is Luke's gospel, and it's Luke chapter 3, and it talks about Jesus being baptized in Luke chapter 3 and verse number 21, and it says, when, now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized, and notice this scripture here, and praying. So here we have Jesus in Luke chapter 3. I'm just going to pause just a moment and give us a time to get caught up. So Luke chapter 3 and verse 21. So let's look at verse 21 because I'm going to go through these pretty quickly and you won't have time necessarily to turn to all of them. I hope you can. You can. You're welcome to. But this may be of help to you. Okay, so now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized. And notice that statement there and praying. So we know that Jesus' baptism was the beginning of his earthly ministry. We don't have a lot of information about Jesus from age 12 to age 30 when he was baptized. But yet we know this, that he started his public ministry by being baptized, and while he was being baptized, he was praying. Now we also know this about Jesus when he was on the cross, and he was crucified, we know what he was doing on the cross. He was praying on the cross. He was talking to his father on the cross. And we know that when he ascended up 40 days later into heaven, he blessed the disciples. So in one sense, we'd say he was praying at that moment. So we'd just say it this way, from the beginning of his public ministry, all the way through the crucifixion and the ascension, Jesus was in a dialogue with God. Now, do you understand Jesus came to teach us how to live. He came as a model. In other words, you want to know how to live? Watch me. Watch my example. So the thing that we want to get across tonight is Jesus was a praying man. 
Jesus was a man that was in constant fellowship with God. He constantly talked to the Lord. How should we live our lives? We should live our lives in constant prayer and communication with God. Prayer is more than just petitioning God. Prayer is just fellowshipping with God. You know, just talking to the Lord. And, and you know, I think if we would only realize God really wants to get involved in every aspect of our life. Now, I, I share this little story. It comes to my mind, and it'll just kind of help set the tone. This summer, we were doing some work at our house, and, and I was doing some work in a in a room and I'd misplaced a box knife okay and I had just had the box knife the day before and I'd misplaced it and I was just working all day talking to the Lord and just working by myself a lot and just talking to the Lord and I just stopped right there and I said Lord I need you to help me find this box knife I said that and soon as I said that I heard the Lord say I will now how many know you're going to find out whether you heard from God in about three or four minutes, right? And so I heard that. I will. So I went out in the garage and looked somewhere, and then I looked at another place by the fireplace. And then right when I was there at the fireplace, the thought came to my mind. I remembered where I had put it the night before, and I'd set it up on a high area on top of a piece of trim up that you couldn't see it. And so I just immediately, that thought came to my mind. That's where it is. I remembered that that moment. Now, how many know that the Lord wants us to have a relationship with him that not only works on Sunday morning, he wants us to have a relationship that works on Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Friday the 13th, whatever days, you know, people think are bad. How I many know we're blessed all the days of our life? Goodness and mercy, they follow us every day of our life. So, so anyway, it was just like for me, I thought to myself, that's the way God really wants us to live every day is that whether it's something big, whether it's something small, God wants to be involved. So we see here in the life of Jesus that when he was baptized, the Bible says he was praying and the heaven was open and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said, thou art my beloved son and thee I am well pleased. So the point I want to get across here is create a dialogue constantly with the Lord in prayer. And it's not only about you talking to the Lord, but it's you listening to the Lord. In this case, Jesus was praying to the Father, but notice the Father came right back to him. You're my beloved son. In you, I'm well pleased. God is constantly wanting us to hear his voice. The heavens were open whenever Jesus prayed. So now we'll go into Matthew's Gospels. So we're talking about the prayers of Jesus and how we can apply these prayers and how they affect our life. So Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Jesus said, after this manner pray ye. It's not necessarily that verbatim you're going to pray this prayer. We understand that in the context of this, he had just talked to the disciples and said, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions. So he would not say, don't use a lot of vain repetitions, and then say, well, just go ahead and repeat. Because we understand there are people that can pray this prayer, but they're like Jesus when he talked about those that they say, Lord, Lord, but their heart is far from him. And so what we've got to do is pray this and go through it. So after this manner, pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. First thing, Jesus introduced the Father in prayer. So he's a God to the world, but how many know he's our Heavenly Father? He's a Father. Now we understand these names of God in the Old Testament, these compound redemptive names. They're so precious to the nation of Israel and they're precious to us, but all of those names are wrapped up in the name of Jesus. But it's a picture of a Father and how he cares and he's concerned. And then it says, hallowed be thy name. And then it goes on to say, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And how many times in our life do we just need to stop and say, Lord, may your will be done about this. Not my will, 
your will be done. Jesus not only told the disciples to pray this way, but we know in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed this prayer repeatedly. And that is, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. So tonight we need to look at this and think, Lord, at times, what do you want? How do you want this to look? I mean, to me, that's the way I pray sometimes. Lord, how do you want this to look? How do you want this to turn out? Lord, what is your way? What is the will of God about this? Give us this day our daily bread. So it's a picture of God. We're looking to you, number one, to be our provision in every area of our life. It's not just physical needs, spiritual needs, emotional needs, material needs, every aspect of our Lord life. Lord, we just look to you to be our provider of our needs in every area of our life. And then it says this, give us this, uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lord, I want to walk in your forgiveness, but I want to extend your forgiveness. And I tell you, we live in a world where it's so easy to get crossways with people. It's so easy to get into strife. And now you say, Pastor, why do I need to stay out of strife? Well, here's one reason. Where envy and strife is, there's confusion and there's every evil work. So when you find people that get into strife, they open doors up to the devil. So we have to shut the door on the devil. Ephesians 4.27, give no place to the devil. So we have to constantly walk, not only in receiving God's forgiveness, but extending God's forgiveness. And that is, Lord, I just forgive this. I forgive that. And why? Because when you get into strife, I'm telling you, there are doors that open up. There are things that happen that don't need to happen. You just need to let it go. And then the Bible says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, help me today not to go the way of the world. Help me not to go the way of temptation. And I think it would be wise for us periodically, Lord, guide me around, navigate my life around the landmines the devil has out there. Not only does God have a plan for your life, but I hate to tell you this, did you know the devil has a plan too? And his plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. His plan is like a roaring lion that has come to devour and we have to ask God, God, give me wisdom that I can be delivered from situations. And many times when people are at the wrong place at the wrong time, they get into the wrong stuff. And so a lot of things that we need to pray and how we can pray is, Lord, just help me to be led of you so that I'm not in situations where I'm vulnerable or I'm susceptible to temptations. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, the purpose of tonight's message is not to go in great detail on this prayer, but it's to remind you that this is a good prayer to put to memory in your life. It's a good prayer for you to just think about the different aspects of it. Lord, you know, hallowed be thy name. And just think about the names of God, all the names of God, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sidkenu, you know, just all the different names of God, El Shaddai. You know, how God is, is so... His plan for your life is so complete and it's so full. Okay, now I'm not going to read every one because there are, there are some prayers in Matthew 11, but let's go over to Matthew chapter number 14. We're talking about the prayers of Jesus. Matthew chapter 14 and verse number 22. This is from the ESV, English Standard Version. It says, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Now, we're going to begin here a number of passages that you're going to see this thread or this continual process in Jesus' life where he gets by himself to pray. Now, there needs to be corporate prayer our group prayer, we call it united prayer. But the reality is you're going to have more time by yourself praying than you are with other believers. And one thing you'll discover about Jesus, that he was intentional in that he went off by himself to pray. If you go off by yourself, that means you got away from a crowd of people for the purpose of praying. And he got alone. And the Bible says when he was alone, he began to talk to the Lord. Now, if Jesus 
needed to do that. Guess what? We need to do that. If Jesus, who was God's son, needed to do it, it would be wise for us to follow his example. Now, the thing I want you to get across when we think about the life of Jesus and the prayers of Jesus, not all of these prayers do we understand what he was talking about when it references him going to pray, but we do see that he just positioned himself to pray. Now, can I say this? Prayer needs to be on the go. Pray without ceasing as you're driving, as you're going along the way of life, you're praying. But there's another side of prayer, and that is you need to have times where you carve out time to pray. And you're just talking, and you're just fellowshipping with God, and you're enjoying his presence. Now, notice Matthew chapter 19. These are prayers of Jesus. And this is the prayer in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 13. And it says, Then children were brought to him, that he might lay his hands on them and pray. So Jesus laid his hands on children and prayed. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, Let the children, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. Now, one of the things you'll see about Jesus when you're looking at his prayers, a lot of his prayers were just simply blessing people. Blessing the loaves and the fishes. Blessing, you know, the, the disciples before he ascended up on high. In this case, blessing the children. And I think we need to realize there's something to be said for just putting your hand on somebody and say, I just bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are God's representative on the earth. You are his ambassador. You, there is a, there's a blessing on your life. And, and as you speak that out of your life, Jesus bless the children. And it's just good to, to bless. Can I get a good amen? Well, Y'all heard that little story I shared about this summer when I had that person I saw. And it wasn't anybody in the church, but it was somebody that I knew. And they're all, it's one of those people, they're always into something. I mean, have y'all ever met somebody like that? I mean, they're always into something. I wasn't talking about Emmett, but I mean, it was somebody else. You know, they're, they're always into something. And I drove, and I was driving in the road, and I saw this person. I thought, oh, my Lord. And the thought was, what are they doing now? And soon as I said that, I heard the Lord say to me, bless and do not curse. He said that to me. Bless and do not curse. Now, was I cursing them? Was I cursing them out? I wasn't cussing at them or cursing at them. Or not. I was just exasperated. And it was like the Lord said, bless and do not curse. And I, I came home and I said, Sharon, i got to tell you something. I heard from the Lord today about a situation, and I told her. And, you know, I can promise you this. Since that day, when I see them, I thank Lord, I bless them in the name of Jesus. But, but can I tell you another thought? It's not just about them, but they represent all. There's a lot of thems out there. Do you know what I'm saying? So what I'm getting at is if you're going to really follow the model of Jesus, you just want to bless people. Y'all, when people are down, we don't need to push them further down. Okay, I'm going to run this one by you. This week, you're going to meet more people that are going opposite to the plan of God than you are people that are headed with the plan of God. You're going to meet more people that are being bullheaded about the plan of God than those that are being submitted to the plan of God. So what you've got to do, instead of just, you know, you don't curse them in the sense that you're speaking evil over them, but you're just exasperated. What we need to do is say, Lord, now I bless them in the name of Jesus. I'm going to let that one soak in. Have you ever watered like a plant and you just have to let it soak in for a little bit? Well, I just want this to soak in on you. So you can bless. So Jesus, when he saw the children, he blessed them. When he saw the disciples, he blessed them. And so we need to be those that bless and we do not curse. Okay, Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 36 we see another time with Jesus now. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's praying. 
Then Jesus went with him to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go there, over there, and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So one of the prayers of Jesus is that he prayed, Lord, not my will be done, your will be done. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Now, I would just say this. We need to pray this over our children. We need to pray this over our loved ones. We need to pray this prayer over people we care about. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll help them to be strong, that they won't fall into temptation. Okay, I'm going to back up and say this. Have you discovered the devil's got a lot of temptations out there? Okay, I'm going to say this. Have you discovered that the enemy is definitely after the youth of this nation? I mean, there are temptations that would just stagger us. Whatever life was like when you went to school, it's different now. And so we need to realize, Lord, we pray over our children. We pray over our loved ones. We pray over new believers. Lord, help them to be strong, that they would not enter into temptation. Now, why is that? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Do you know when people really get born again, when they're really saved, they want to do what's right. They want to please God. Their spirit is one with God. They want to do what's right. But what keeps them from doing what's right? Well, it's just that nature in them. That other, it's, it's not really the nature in them. It's the way they know. It's the unrenewed mind that works through the old carnal nature. And they just begin to think, oh, instead of leaning on the divine nature of God, they get that unrenewed mind and they start siding in with that. So what we need to do here is realize that we should pray for people. God, hold them, help them, that they won't fall into temptation. Now, let me tell you what. Did you know there's a lot of people's lives that get messed up because they get, they get into uh, temptations? Now, I'm going to tell you, one way you, you can do, you can deliver yourself out of a lot of temptations. Oh, Pastor, every time I get around that person, I find myself getting into sin. Okay, here's a revelation. Get away from that person. Every time I get with that person and we start to talk and I get into an argument. Okay, I got a revelation. Quit getting around them and quit talking about, don't, you know, stop sin before it starts. And it starts in a thought life. And, and temptation here is the solicitation to do wrong. Now notice this. Again, the second time he went away and prayed, my father. If this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. So here you have Jesus, the Son of God. He had prayed once that I want your will to be done. He prayed a second time, I want your will to be done. In verse 43, and again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And so seeing them again, he went away and he prayed the third time, saying the same words. So you say, Pastor, is it scriptural to pray the same words? more uh, repeatedly. It is here in this prayer. It's not the prayer of faith. This is a prayer of consecration and dedication to do the will of God. And when you're really consecrating yourself to do God's will over what you want to do in the natural, you're going to pray that prayer repeatedly. Lord, I said it before, but I'm saying it again. Not what I want, but what do you want in my life? And we're surrendered to do the will of God, whatever that might be. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest uh, later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Do you think Jesus was praying not only for them, but he knew Judas is coming. i got to be strong here. 
And I tell you, there are Judases in your life. There are situations in your life that are not going to be pleasant. And you got to say, Lord, I want to be close to you so that I can overcome this. I guess for me, as I've gone through these prayers of Jesus, just this whole concept of deliver me from temptation, lead us not into temptation, spirit is will and the flesh is weak, I think that's maybe a side as a pastor I need to encourage people with. Because let's face it, y'all, sin messes people's lives up. Have you discovered that? 